Hey Lewis, good evening, thanks for joining us mate. Just getting a couple of things set up and then we'll uh, hop on board and fire her up. There's no one else at uh, Inverness Airfield by the looks of things. We've got the thing, got the uh, airfield all to ourselves. Which also means there's actually no uh, no Vatsim ATC either, so we really are on our own. Francesco, good evening. Hope you've had a good weekend so far. Ah, good, good, good. So I'm just setting a couple of the controls up because, uh, as you know, I did the flight on long haul Friday and we had a spoiler issue so I'm just making sure that that's not uh, not replicated. I want to try and get rid of that if we can. So let me just quickly nip in here before we uh, get off the ground and I just want to set these control null zones up to make sure that that uh, doesn't cause an issue. Uh, do do do. Where are we? So we're looking at that that one just there. <coughs> Let's see if we can flatten the curve off just at the bottom there. Try and uh, try and reduce that there we go hopefully that will work we'll find out when we get into the cockpit momentarily okay let's uh, apply save that and head back there we go all right let's uh, let's get on board shall we And of course, it's nice and dark. Let's turn the batteries on. Get get a little bit of light in here. Get the external power on. Gabriel, good evening. Nice to see you. As always. Uh, dome lights. Grab the dome lights. Ah, there we are. Wonderful. And now we've got the external power on, we'll get the ideas aligning just so we can uh, get that working. Although I think after the other night I might have got these set to instant. Oh we have, they're still set to instant, so I need to go in and change that. But in order to do that you have to change it and then go back and reload the flight. So that saves us a bit of time this evening. So that's good. Turn on the nav lights so everybody knows we're here. Just set the uh, no smoking lights, passenger signs, etc. And we can get the APU started as well. We'll just get the uh, get the ATIS sent to us, so we know what the weather is. That'll come back in a moment. Uh, right, so this looks like a very quiet airfield. Do we have any ground services at Inverness? Let's find out. We have fuel supply and power supply. Well, we've already got the power supply, I think. Inverness ground easy tree two zero. Could you please send a ground power unit? Well, there we go. We can see the uh, hazard beacon. Uh, Francesco, in your opinion, is Vatsim a good mod even if I don't speak perfect English? Uh, yes, as long as you can understand uh, the basic aviation terms, absolutely. Of course, remember Vatsim is not a mod. It's just a network that you, uh, that you fly on. Um, you fly on the network and you've got live air traffic controllers controlling you if they are online of course uh, which sadly tonight certainly at um, at Inverness they are uh, they are not uh, I don't know about Newcastle yet we'll have to wait and see when we get down there uh, 
So, with that, let's start getting some passengers on board, shall we? And, uh, it's only a short flight this evening, but even so, it'll probably take as long to set up as it will to uh, to actually fly the route. I'll pop a link into the flight route as well in a moment. A turtle, good evening. That's a great name, if you don't mind me saying. Okay, so cargo's in progress, been loaded, and passengers are now here as well. David, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Okay, let's have a look at this uh, flight plan for tonight. If I bring that up, then you'll be able to see it as well. There we go. So there's the operational flight plan we're going to be popping in and following. So I've already preloaded the flight plan just to save a bit of time. Um, also worth noting, if you are flying on VATSIM, it's always worth preloading the flight plan in from uh, from SimBrief, just because it does miss a few waypoints out if you don't, if you program it in manually. Uh, which is annoying, but I'm sure that'll get fixed in time. Uh, well, yes, <laughs> I did think of you when I selected this up for uh, for this evening. I thought, well, I'll make Will happy if nothing else. Uh, Daniel, question for Long Haul Friday: Can you do Manchester to Hergada? Uh, Daniel, how long's that flight? Just out of interest, I like to do about six hours if uh, if possible. Uh, so that might be that might be doable. Well, let's get this popped in. So, our departure and arrival airport is already in there. The alternate is Edinburgh. Echo. Oh, clear the GPS primary button. I must forget to do that. The Flyby base and your local airport. In that case, I will rely on you, Will, for local knowledge. Uh, Echo Golf Papa Hotel is the alternate. Our flight number tonight is Easy 34 Alpha Mike. It's easy Y. Three, four, alpha, Mike. And pop that in. Cost index is eight. It was your flyby base, yes. So, uh, are they? Are, I can't remember if I've asked you this. Aren't they coming back next year if all goes to plan? It'd be great if possible. My son, in particular, loves flyby because he loved the uh, the purple dash eights. Uh, so the purple ones uh, is his favourite aircraft. Or one of his favourite aircraft. Uh, five and a half to six hours, Daniel. In that case, that does sound doable, doesn't it? Well, uh, we'll certainly look into that because I'm always up for uh, up for suggestions. Uh, here in the ground, what is your longest flight? Uh, longest flight ever, or longest flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020? Let me know, and uh, I'll uh, be happy to answer that. Uh, lifted mind. Hey, why is it frowned upon to use the Microsoft Flight Simulator in-game flight planner? I understand the game's ATC is awful at times, but the uh, I-4 flight plans always take me where I need to go. Um, lifted mind. There is absolutely nothing wrong with using the Microsoft in-game flight planner. The only thing it doesn't give you is like what you can see on screen now, which is uh, a professional-looking operational flight plan. The in-game flight planner is absolutely perfect if you're doing a uh, quick flight. Of course, we know the ATC isn't perfect, but that's just the ATC. Um, the only reason a lot of people use things like SimBrief is because they can pre-file it if they're flying on the VATSIM network like we are now. Um, it's not as easy, I don't think, to do it from uh, from the flight planner. That's 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 really the only reason. But there's there's no reason why not at all. I, I've used it, and what's more, I've compared SimBrief flight plans to the Microsoft Flight Simulator flight plans, and there's really very very little difference between the two. So. If you are happy using it, lift of mind, I uh, I would absolutely go for it. David Christie, are you using the latest uh, developer mod, or is this still the one from before the last patch? This is still the one from before the last patch, just because I've not had a autopilot issue with it. Well, I say that, anyone that was watching uh, yesterday for Long Haul Friday will have seen us take off in the American Airlines livery from Seattle. We quickly discovered the autopilot didn't work, so we had to return to base for a technical uh, problem. 
uh, we returned to Seattle and about an hour later we set back off exactly the same patch exactly the same flight plan nothing different other than I used the fly-by-wire livery as opposed to the American Airlines livery and we flew without an issue so clearly liveries do cause a problem <coughs> I don't know why I'm not a coder but but they do um, Will, I don't know, but they might, I believe, didn't pay attention. Will, I hope for you, mate. I really, really do. Uh, so we're departing in Inverness today on runway 20... Oh, God, which is it? 23? There we go, 23. There are no SIDS, because there's no SIDS at Inverness, so that means we just go direct to our first waypoint, which is Gussie. Um, here in the ground, flights in 2020. Uh, the longest flight I've done was uh, one of the long haul Friday flights, which is probably. So we've either got. Uh, we've done JFK to New York, uh, JFK to London Heathrow, we've done Dublin to Boston, uh, we did London Heathrow to Lagos, and of course we did Seattle to uh, Miami yesterday. So. Um, so yeah, well, in dedication of you, you should find a fly we had on and fly it for him. I did have the Dash 8, the Q-8 in FSX, which was unbelievably difficult to fly compared to the Airbus, uh, but it was very realistic. Um, when, 737 co when 737 comes to Microsoft flights, him fly in the Ryanair livery and do a BPA landing. Uh, that, that usually happens without really having to try. <laughs> Uh, Dan Fino would be angry with you. <coughs> uh, right, okie dokie, let's crack on getting this set up. Alright, so that's set up, uh, we best put in some fuel weights, haven't we? Uh, so let's look at the init B. There we go. Daniel, no, sadly not easy, not a real commercial pilot. Uh, due to medical reasons, I can't pass the uh, class 1 medical. Which is frustrating to say the least, but we have to deal with it, don't we? Doesn't mean I stopped studying the A320 though, or uh, or as Will said, I uh, I have some good friends within the EasyJet airline that can help me out. Uh, right, so what are we doing? We're putting the payload in of uh, 18 and a half tons. Uh, let's get this up here. What's that? 18. Let's go 48 percent. I'll go 49 percent. I wish these sliders were easy to control. That would make things a lot easier. Slightly unbalanced, so let's shift 2,000 kilograms to the rear baggage and take 2,000 kilograms off the forward baggage. That much looks much better. So our zero fuel weight center of gravity is 27.68, which is 27.7, rounded up in the top right-hand corner, as you can see. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, and then let's add the fuel, which is not going to be very much for this flight, is it? Uh, what's our block planned? Fuel is 3.2 tonnes, so not at all. Business class on EasyJet. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Uh, the only business class seats on EasyJet are the two at the front of the aeroplane, but you have to fly the aircraft. <laughs> Uh, there we go, so we've got our final centre of gravity, it was 27 point, uh, oh, it's going to be 28 that isn't it, round it up, uh, which gives us a trim setting for takeoff of, uh, da -da, work this out, up oh, 0.1, there we go, so that's set up. Good. So that's all the weights. Let's just pop these here. So the zero fuel weight for the flight is 59.5. As you can see on the flight plan, uh, zero fuel weight center of gravity was 27.7. 27.7. And our block fuel loaded is 3.2. Will, well, you weren't here before me today. No, I was waiting for you, but I thought, you know what, it's a Saturday night. Do people have better things to do? To 8.0. Uh, what's the trip wind? H1. I didn't think it was going to be massive given how short the uh, flight is. 
And there we go. So there's the trip wind. All that will uh, sort itself out. Well, do I have Discord? Um, no, I don't. I, don't. I do have it on my phone, but just to keep an eye on what's happening on the Fly By Wire Discord channel, that's the uh, that's the only reason I couldn't really get into it. Uh, there's just that many channels. I th I thought Facebook was difficult. The moment you move into Discord, that's a whole other realm. Uh, right, so that's our performance data is all set, our fuel predictions all set, init A, init B set, flight plan is set, and let me just check what the weather is, uh, so we've got messages received, uh, AP isn't 0.859.5, uh, yes it is, what did I put in, I'll go back and check that in a second. Uh, 220 zero knots, that's fine. Uh, well, if you want help with the Airbus, mate, I'm always here for, for you. Well, me and HD, although HD's not blogged in yet, so he's probably busy with the, with the missus. Uh, what did I put in the um, zero fuel weight then? Oh, I put in 59.9, good spot. 59 point, that's why you know we have a cop out there to pick you up on rubbish mistakes like that. Uh, yeah, so our takeoff weight is a little bit out. Uh, zero fuel weight, 59.5. Uh, Central gravity doesn't change though, so we'll just update that. 27.7. There we go, that's changed. Uh, oh, that's a much better landing weight, that looks more accurate. And the takeoff weight is uh, accurate now as well. Uh, Daniel, do you watch any of the EasyJet flight attendant channels? No, I didn't even know they existed, to be honest. I have an indoor flight sim, and the attendant call button goes to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I think if I tried that, I'd only get away with it once. Alright, that's all set up. Uh, I know what I didn't do. Just check the... Uh, just check the Q&H is 1024, lovely. So hopefully we will not get an autopilot issue this evening. We're back in the EasyJet livery, so that should be, uh, that should be all sorted. Turn the flight directors on. Uh, Nabil, has the A320 been sorted yet? Yes and no. There's several workarounds going along. Um, however, I'm not really doing any of them. I'm just using an old um, developer version of the mod, which is working as long as you only fly certain liveries, as we discovered yesterday. The American Airlines livery sent it into a nosedive. Uh, but the fly-by-wire livery comes fine. But the thing is, always check it out. Check it out with uh, nothing else in the community folder. That's the main main thing. <laughs> well, I'm hoping for your sake that the only thing in the mug was coffee, mate. Oh, look, we've got a company. There's somebody else on the ramp at in Venice. Hello. Uh, in that case, we'd better tune to uh, better tune to the uh, Unicom frequency, haven't we, for Vats in? Yeah. Okay, uh, do you know what? It's blooming cold this evening. Let's get the uh, aircraft heated up. <laughs> Hire a robot. Hey, I hear those robots can do wonderful things nowadays. Just checking, we've still no ATC online here before we start moving, and we've not, so that's fine. Uh, right, you know, the actual Navigraph charts here are uh, are not great. Where's the airport information? So, what we're going to do is, looking at this, we taxi... Uh, it's actually, we're going to taxi back. Do you know what, if we step outside of the aircraft, we'll actually turn around slightly, taxi... I say we're going to turn around. That's not that's not going to happen, is it? All right, this is going to be a long taxi, ladies and gentlemen. And oh, we've got two aircraft there. Let's hope we don't clip them on the way past. Then we're parked in a strange position, aren't we? Do you know what? We may 
Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right, yeah, we're going to taxi the full length of the runway and uh, looks like we're turning around at the end, so that'll be fun. All right, we shouldn't be uh, too far from being fully loaded now, so that should be good. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Ooh, who's just asked for the uh, old mod version? Andrew. Yes, mate, the old mod version. Nip to the uh, the YouTube channel and look for the A320 fixed um, stream. Let me see if I can find it for you before we get moving. There's still a few passengers being very slow and coming on board as you can hear so while that's lining up uh, sorting itself out let's have a look uh, da, 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 da. copy that link for you there we go master caution did I put 28 tons of fuel in the uh, muck do oh god I hope not no we would have been much more overweight if I'd have done that but now you're making me doubt doubt myself we should have 3.2 tons double check uh, oh good lord I did how did that happen in fact how did that happen that can't have been right oh I know what I've done I know exactly what I've done this is why you shouldn't fly when you're tired on a Friday night There we go. Yeah, 28. If anyone was wondering where on earth that number came from, 28 came from... That's the uh, the trim setting. Uh, that's our final centre of gravity weight. Uh, so that's why that's popped in there. We'll check these figures again now, because that's the second mistake I've made this evening. Do, do, do. Where have you gone? There we are. Take off weight, take off weight, 26. That looks good. Landing weight, 61.2. That looks good. I even checked those and they were right. So why on earth didn't they change and flag up as being completely different from my, uh, from the flight plan? That's strange. Hmm. Predicted fuel shows us estimated fuel on board at arrival, 1.6 tons. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right, cabin crew, how are our passengers doing? We must be nearly ready by now. And with that, we can get rid of the external power. Ooh, Daniel, I've not got time to fly to Australia. Oh, wonderful. Alright, let's get the beacon lights on and we can start the uh, begin the engine start sequence. Uh, starting, air just num uh, uh, starting engine number one. Do I know any flight plans for FSX and how to do it in the McDo for the Aerosoft? If you've got the Aerosoft um, A320 from FSX, that is a really neat uh, neat aircraft to have. The McDo is uh, far more advanced than the one here at the moment. Um, but again, I just use Simbrief. Simbrief is uh, perfect. And again, I think you can just import the flight plans or you can actually physically put in all the waypoints with all the airways and it works works well i used to use it before uh, moving over to uh, microsoft flight sim so yeah we'll go go for it just use the uh, use sim brief and uh, and that will work for you i promise all right let's uh, close the doors because i'm fed up hearing the passengers lock the uh, lock the door that's close. Ryanair 550 Sierra Delta is pushing back and starting stand three. So that's the Ryanair in front of us. Good morning. Thank you. 
Okay, what I'm actually going to do is, do is just to save a little bit of time, we're going to taxi forward and then we'll get a push back over here and then we'll actually make this taxi down here which is an old runway actually. We can taxi down there and then we'll uh, be closer to the end of runway 2, 3. I thought I told the external power crew to disappear. I can still see them there. Although I don't think I'm connected. Uh, let's just tell them to disappear. On behalf of the crew, I ask that you please direct your attention to the monitors as we review the emergency procedures. There are six emergency exits on the aircraft. Take a minute to locate the one closest to you and note that it may be behind you. Count the number of rows to the exit. Should the cabin experience pressure loss, stay calm and listen for instructions from the cabin crew. Oxygen masks will drop down from above your seat. Place the mask over your mouth and nose like this. And uh, well, yeah, that is me. I just decided I'll make my own. Children, make sure you put your own mask on During the week, I can't get on the mic when I'm uh, flying, so I thought if I did that, at least, at least you'd feel connected to me somehow. Carry on luggage and items behind. So there's the Ryanair in front of us pushing back. So we'll just make a quick announcement to uh, so them and let them know what we're doing. Hey, Inverness traffic, easy 34 Alpha Mike A is going to push back and taxi to runway 23, but we'll taxi via runway 11 and hold short for the Ryanair departure. Okay, so let's get the cabin crew to sort the doors out before we move. Morad, good morning from Melbourne. Excellent. Uh, had issues downloading the files from the drop dot link as it owed into separate files rather than one uh, A320NX file. Uh, right. If you go to the actual link, click into it, and I think this is something to do sometimes with the um, with the way drop dot Dropbox works in your browser. If you click on the link, the top right hand screen of your browser, it should, it obviously opens up with all the files, but it should just say in the top right hand side, download. And if you do download uh, from the top right, it should then download the A320NX zip file. Once it's downloaded the zip file, that's the uh, A320 folder that you can then uh, unzip and pop into uh, Unzip and pop into uh, the community folder. Obviously, make sure you have nothing else in your community folder before uh, before trying it. So, as I say, we're just ever seen an aircraft make a three-point turn before? Uh, Will, what is the airline? What? Am I being silly here? I've lost you, Will, I'm afraid. Spell that out in English for me, mate. Inverness traffic, uh, Ryanair 550 Sierra Delta, taxi to uh, holding point Alpha 1, runway 05. Is he going to take off from runway 05? That's not currently the active runway. Oh, well, that makes much more sense. <laughs> I 
Uh, so, Will, what is the airline thing? Is is that your call sign? Uh, again, Will, I, uh, I'm a bit lost and confused with what you're asking me. Try again. <laughs> Promise I'll answer you when I understand the question. Important, John, you need to increase thrust. No, actually, the A320 taxes quite nicely on idle thrust. So if you've got, and that's a real thing, by the way, so if you are, um, if you are wondering why your thrusts are idle, but your aircraft's still moving forward, uh, the real aircraft does do that. The only problem you've got, of course, in Microsoft Flight Center. Yeah, traffic runway 550 Delta is back tracking runway 054, runway 23. Oh, that's fine. Uh, yeah, the only problem you've got in um, Microsoft Flight Sim is in real life you can apply, apply a little bit of brake pressure to the brakes just to control the speed. Um, but in Flight Sim you're just uh, clicking a button or whatever which then obviously applies a lot of pressure and you end up doing something like that and jerking forward a bit. Which is something that you should do actually um, while taxiing. All pilots do a brake test before uh, before that. All right, so we're going to stop just at the end of this runway. It's a very short runway. I don't know if it's actually used anymore. It's only 700 meters, but we basically stop here and it crosses with uh, the main runway, runway two, three, runway five. Inverness traffic, easy, 3-4, alpha mic is holding short, runway 23, currently at the end of runway 29. So we'll just sit here, pop the parking brakes on, and we'll tidy the aircraft up. So, parking brakes are on, engine mode selector, norm, and we can turn off the uh, APU bleed, and the APU. Smoke doing a 747 from Goose Bay to Denver in 30 minutes. Nice. How long's that flight, my friend? I'm not very up on my uh, American routes. AP had a nice flight to Madeira today with a tricky landing. Arnav. Ah, Arnav's always a good landing, isn't it? It just takes away that sort of safety blanket of the ILS. Oh, Chris, thanks for reminding me. I do this every stream, don't I? Get rid of that. There we are, flight plan is gone. Uh, Murad, last question. Does the new McDo features such as ATIS direct FMC work on this mod? Uh, yes, it does. Yes, so uh, you can get all your weather information, all that stuff. That's all there. Um, so that still works. It's just a couple of other little features uh, in the new newer update that I've not managed to get working just yet. Uh, so this mod that I've got, it's only about three weeks old, so it did have quite a lot still uh, still going for it. So yeah, well worth it. Okay, so flaps one. Arm the spoilers. Let's just check that actually. Are we at zero percent? Oh no, we've still got one percent. How is that? Let's see if that changes. I might have to look into a bit more detail of that once I've got rid of the... Uh, once we're not streaming. AP, yeah, this is so useful now with the McDo, absolutely right it is. Inverness traffic, Ryanair 550 Delta is taking off runway 23. Okay, so we'll just wave him to spin round and take off runway 23 and then we'll basically follow him. It's a very short runway as well at Inverness, uh, so it is a toga takeoff. Uh, so just before takeoff checklist, we'll run through that. Uh, fuel is all balanced, that's fine. If you're wondering why there's a slight difference there in the fuel, we've got 20 kilograms difference. That is uh, 20,000 kilograms difference. That is the uh, APU that drains that off, it drains it off of engine number one. So that's why there's a little difference there. Um, 
Right, so before flight checklist, we'll do the flight control checks. So US left. traffic, run air, five five zero down to airborne. So that's our uh, flight control check, briefings check, flap seconds check, FMA and takeoff data is all check, transponders, and we'll just get ready now to. We haven't got a uh, squawk code because there's no ALS, uh, ATC online. Uh, turn the weather radar on. TARA for the TCAS. And turn the packs off for takeoff. And landing lights on before we enter the runway. Uh, I'm just making an announcement. I'll come back to you, Chris. Easy three file for Mike. Imminent traffic is taxiing. Backtracking runway two three. Uh, Chris, so yeah, I had absolutely no issues whatsoever with uh, that mod that I popped in the link for people to download on the video. Uh, until yesterday, I flew out of Seattle uh, using an American Airlines livery, and we had the autopilot issue. So it became very apparent because I then went back, um, set off again, just using the fly-by-wire uh, livery, and it flew perfectly for five and a half hours. So, yeah, you just, um, it was delivery. I have no idea how a livery can cause an issue, but it did. So, try it with, if you can, try it with nothing in the community folder. Absolutely nothing other than the mod in the community folder. And then uh, add deliveries back in as and when you've got to, got the aircraft working. Uh, AP, why do you take packs off for takeoff? Gives the engines a little bit more power, and it also is standard operating procedure for uh, for EasyJet. And the packs come back on when we pull the thrust back to uh, climb thrust. I'm just looking at the chart here for Inverness. I can't see a turnaround pad. It must have one, surely. I guess we'll find out in a moment. If we do have an autopilot issue, we can probably continue the flight. It just means I'm going to be flying manually. It's not a massive flight, is it? So, have we got a turnaround pad here, or... Uh or not. Important job, we've got a taxi speed here of 25 knots, which is not slow in the slightest. Right, okay, there actually doesn't look to be much of a turnaround here, so we'll very slowly. Might be something that's just missing from, uh, from flight sim. There's the Ryanair that just took off before us. So when I've re-downloaded the mod today, is that the, a, a brand new one? Have they fixed something? That's good to know. Flight director works better, excellent, no more going around in circles, turn off uh, the spoilers and elevator computer. That's fair enough. Yeah, Chris, have a go with no liveries. Come back to us. Leave, us, leave a comment on this video. It'll be interesting to uh, see how you get on. Uh, auto brake to max, and just check the speed rate lever. Oh, good, we are at zero, so we can go TO config. All green, that's excellent. Yeah. Inverness traffic is E34 Alpha Mike taking off runway 23, south departure. Okay, off we go. I say it's toga takeoff because it's a very short runway here at Inverness. Man toga SS runway. V1, rotate. That's interesting. Look at the flight director. We may be flying manual. How annoying. Oh, 
about flight direction has got me pulling over to the right, doesn't it? Yeah, we've got the autopilot issue. Ah, set climb thrust. Oh well, it makes it a more uh, more eventful flight, doesn't it? If I have to manually fly this thing. So that's the first time I've had this issue in the EasyJet livery. It really could just be hit and miss, you know, couldn't it? We'll just get the takeoff stabilised, and then we'll uh, we'll have a bit of a play around, see if we can uh, see if we can fix anything. All right. So thankfully, at least the. Uh, Speed still works. Yeah, so that's fine. Uh, what I am going to do, however, is now we'll set standard pressure. And we're climbing up to our altitude. In fact, why am I bothering to set the uh, autopilot? Uh, do you know what I will do? We will set it, but obviously we're flying manually. So, uh, here's the autopilot issue due to livery as well. <laughs> Up until about 30 seconds ago, I thought so, because I'd never had an issue until I uh, changed liveries. Uh, right, so the good thing though about the A320 is that it still is a fly-by-wire aircraft. So, we don't need to have hands-on all the way up. Let's give us a little bit of light in the cockpit. Is the default working fine? Do you know what? I have absolutely no idea because I've not tried it. Uh, Philippe, talking about flex temp, um, the way to work that out is there obviously each each airline utilizes their own piece of software which they can use to do that and it's it, it's quite complicated um, there is an online uh, online flex temp calculator you can use and it works quite well with this uh, let me see if I can find a link to that um, yes so here you go if you want to use flex temp have a look at uh, have a look at that website just there. Uh, Richard says no, the default isn't working fine. Oh, oh, fair enough. Oh, so we've got the autopilot issue. Has anyone ever managed to do anything in flight to fix it? There's a question. So if we turn off the flight directors, because they're not working. Uh, 10,000 feet, let's turn off the lights. What to do when the autopilot does random stuff, what he is not supposed to? Well, in real life you would either return to the airport, as we did yesterday at Seattle, and get a new aircraft, which is what we did yesterday in Seattle, or you opt to fly manually for the for the journey. Well, as this is only a short journey, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, we'll fly manually for this. We'll not tell the passengers there's anything wrong. So we can just lower the nose for the uh, the rate of climb a little bit, and that will help get our speed up. And remember, it is a fly-by-wire aircraft, so I'm not now sat with my hand on the side stick. I literally lowered the nose just then with the um, with the side stick. And once I got it to uh, the pitch that I wanted at five degrees nose up, I um, I took my hand off the side stick, and it holds it there. Uh, 
Uh, Richard turned off autopilot, got plane sail, flew for a couple of minutes, then switched it back on. Seemed okay, apart from the landing. Uh, oh. Do I dare even attempt to uh, turn AP-1 off? Uh, important John, Turkish Airlines pilot once flew manually across the Atlantic for 10 hours. <laughs> Fair play to him. Fair play to him. Was it Northwest Airlines uh, 747 at one point? Uh, they had a structural fail and had to hand fly back to uh, Anchorage, I think it was, over the, when they were over the Pacific. That must have been hard work. So if we look, we've got a slight wind from the right, which is just blowing us off course, so we can bring this, uh, bring this back a bit. Try to direct to the next point. Interesting idea. If we turn the flight director on, we can still see how we've got that pulling over to the right. Let's turn that off. And we can have a go, can't we? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So if we go flight plan and direct to Inbass, which I think is the next one, straight in front of us, as you can see. Select that. So that's changed. It's still not affected the flight director, so if we turn that on, we would still pull over to uh, pull out the ride. AP, did I see the macros in uh, Manchester? Yes, I did. I also saw that. Um, also saw that the next update for from Azobo for Microsoft Flight Sim is going to be the UK. So I thought I'm not going to do anything to mess with that just yet because they'll probably break it. So we've just tried going direct to the next waypoint. It hasn't affected the um, hasn't affected the flight director, unless of course the autopilot has to be on at the time that we do it. Has anyone got any further events, uh, advances on uh, that idea? Uh, the Cuddler for Life, that's a great name. Uh, do you ascend and descend manually in this? No, you shouldn't. The autopilot should do it for you. But it appears a little broken at the moment, so this is going to be a manual flight to Newcastle, so that's fun. Which means, as I'm going to be busy, you guys can help me out. Elias, uh, I'll read that out. Not sure if you know this, but the fixes uh, to the download is the latest version of 5 by is then spawning cold and dark, press escape, save the flight plan, and then immediately load the flight. I have seen that, and to be honest, I've not tried it, but I think after this particular attempt, I'm going to. Uh, just to see what happens. Okay, we're reaching 24,000 feet, so I want to just start levelling this off a little bit. Daniel, back after my moment to extreme Karen because I closed my door. <laughs> Flying to the tune, Richard. I can't do the accent, but yes, you're right. Not just flying to the tomb, but we're flying there manually for the entire flight, so that'll be good. Maybe the lock button. Uh, the localizer button won't do anything, or it shouldn't do anything, should I say, until we're uh, approaching the ILS. Uh, turn it on. It arms it, but it doesn't do anything. <coughs> Did it work for you, Elias? Right, in that case, that's what we're doing from uh, from tomorrow onwards. All right, so we're basically the flight plan takes us uh, down to Glasgow and then we head east towards Newcastle. Whilst we're relatively in stable flight, I'm just going to get the charts up for Newcastle. If anybody fancies getting me the uh, meta for Newcastle, just because it'll be easier to read it on the chat screen than it will faffing about with the McDo, that would be most appreciated. Then I know what we're doing when we get there. Uh, where are we arriving? We're arriving on way 25 at Newcastle. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, 
A little bit of a wing wobble, but I'm not too fussed about that. So I've just gone direct to our next waypoint and it's still not onto the flight director, so never mind. Daniel, how are you going to hold cruising altitude on manual flying? Uh, well, as I say, the Airbus is still a fly-by-wire aircraft, so my hand isn't really on the side stick at all. If you look, I'm just setting now the pitch and the attitude, angle of attack, whatever you want to call it. And there we go. So I'm not touching the side stick at the moment, but we're we're manually flying. So I just need to keep an eye on it. But um, but yeah, you look at that. We're we're pretty pretty on par. So the way the Airbus works, the fly by wire systems works, it's it's almost a, a a point and shoot approach. You turn the side stick, you let go of the side stick, and wherever the aircraft is when you let go of the side stick. That is how the aircraft continues to fly. Um, not quite sure how this would work if I was in a Boeing aircraft. I don't know the Boeing systems, but so if you look at this, our crew altitude is 24,000 feet. We're at 23,970 feet. I'm happy with that. I'll take that. Um, Bottomly, yeah, we're off to uh, off to Newcastle. Richard, thanks for that. Let's get this in the. Uh, get this in the approach phase. So, do do do. Uh, where are we, where are we, where are we? So, where we got? Q and H is 1024. 024. Temperature at Newcastle is 3 degrees. <laughs> it's cold. Um, and what's the wind doing? Wind's calm. Wind's calm. Should we land on the other runway? No, that'd be boring. Uh, so if we've no wind, zero 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 at zero. Uh, transition altitude, I believe, is six thousand feet at Newcastle. I'll double check that in a moment. So even though, as you can see, I can't see the. Um, I'm not looking at what the aircraft's doing. I know for a fact that it's, it's flying straight and level. Uh, what's the? Decision altitude. Oh no, that's Cat three. We're not doing a Cat three landing. Uh, cat one is four three nine. And there we go. So let's just go back over here and check that. Look, see, we're we're pretty level. And we're happy with that. So that's working quite nicely. Um, let's have a look. Right. So, Will, how long? Oh, not long, mate. Not long at all. Um, I mean, how far are we out? I can probably see it on the navigation display. Uh, it's probably... We're, we're going to be on the ground in about 20, 25 minutes, I reckon. Hopefully no sooner, otherwise something's gone wrong. Uh, can I talk about when to activate the approach phase in real life? You want to activate the approach phase whenever you, as the pilot, want to start approaching the green dot speed. The green dot speed is basically the slowing down of the aircraft and it gives the best lift to drag ratio. So it's basically an instruction to start slowing the aircraft down, ready for, uh, ready for landing. Uh, Will, I'll look, <laughs> I'll look from the house. Turtle, uh, got to go now mate, have a good flight, thank you very much for joining me. Will's cold, he's come back inside. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it should be runway 24, is it? Yeah, runway 24 for landing. No, 25, sorry. Runway 25. And if you see it now, you look, I'm starting to climb a little bit, so the, al uh, the altitude's flashing at me to say, come on, get a grip. I would get a grip. My autopilot got a grip, that'd be much easier. Uh, 
Uh, by the way, there is no failure of the autopilot. There is a failure of the autopilot. If you look at the flight director, we've got the green line over to the right-hand side, so it wants to put me into a right-hand spiral dive. Um, so I'm hand-flying this. Got a little wing wobble going off as well, haven't we? Ah, Sim Racer Flight Sim 1000. Hi there, thanks for joining us. Nabil, have I tried turning the autopilot on yet? No, I didn't. Look at the flight director. That will tell you what the autopilot will do if I do turn it on. Um, it'll dive me down to the right. Uh, okay, so we want to be 2,000... I'm just looking at the approach here. We need to be 2,000 feet by about 5 miles out. Um, so... Let's pop the uh, let's pop the arrival in. There's no star, I believe, coming in from the north. Uh, just watch th that we're not descending too much. So we're going to be landing arrival runway two five. It's the ILS approach. Uh, no star, and it's just taken us basically via Newcastle, which is the published approach. So I'll insert that. Uh, and the published approach takes us right over the top of Newcastle Airport and we basically spin round, do a little bit of a racetrack loop. And we want to cross Newcastle at two and a half thousand feet. So this is the Glasgow VOR. From Glasgow below us, just there, look, on the navigation display. And we can start making our right turn now. And now again, the wonderful thing about the Airbus A320 is normally in an aircraft when you start to turn left or right you lose quite a bit of altitude unless you compensate for it not in the Airbus thanks to the fly-by-wire systems uh, three green yeah so save and reload the cold and dark yeah it's um it's a workaround that I had seen, I'd just not tried it because I'd not had the issue, but you know, famous last words, we've got the issue now, so I shall do that from now on. Smiled Castle 51, glad everyone's having the same problem. Thought it was just you. Absolutely not. Absolutely not just you, my friend. Do you know, I can't remember the last time I flew a full flight. I know it's not a long flight tonight, but the last time I flew a full flight manually. Uh, right, let me just quickly work out the top of descent, which can't be far away now. Uh, so, what we are, we're at 24,000 feet, we need to be at 3,500 feet, which means we need to lose 20,500 feet. Uh, so, we divide that by 1,000, times it by 3, add 10 for slowing down, and when we're about 70 miles away from Newcastle, we need to begin the descent. Just watch that climbing again ever so slightly. Uh, so what did I say? About 70 miles away from Newcastle. We'll begin the descent. We can just see Newcastle will be at the top of the navigation display just there. So three green. Is it a patch that caused the autopilot problem? Yes, it is. The uh, big American patch caused the problem. So there you are. But we're kind of getting used to it, aren't we? Every time there's a patch, there's a problem with the mods, which is why, apart from the fly-by-wire mod, I've not actually put anything in. That's the only thing I've got. My speed brake isn't calibrated properly, and look, I've got a 1% speed brake uh, sticking out at me. I missed this approach in the Dash 8. 
what a notoriously difficult aircraft to fly compared to uh, compared to things like the Airbus, of course. I had one of the uh, I had the Majestic Dash Eight um, in FSX, uh, and I, di I didn't know the systems really well, so that was a steep learning curve for me. Uh, as you know, I'm a I'm an Airbus boy, and the altitude select that's the thing that sticks in my mind that just was not intuitive at all the way it held the altitude in the autopilot good evening from Sweden thank you for joining us Daniel, you know how to calculate the descent better than me. I just look at the 160 mark and then start descending and end up holding at a low altitude for ages. Yeah, well, nothing wrong with that. You get a bit of a VFR tour going on then, don't you, for your passengers as you're going, uh, going around? D Dylan, Dylan, D-L-L-N, still having issues with the autopilot. Oh, you're not on your own, mate. Mine's not turned on. Hope it gets fixed. Me too. Uh, I've not checked the Radnav page. Have we got 115, uh, 111.5 in there? Yes, we have. That's good. That's very good. Okay, so basically what we're going to do, we'll cross over the Newcastle uh, NDB, which is... Can we tune that in? Uh... Does that work? So the Newcastle NDB is 352. 352. Pop it in there. And could we turn that on? Well, it doesn't appear to be working. We're surely not too far away. I would have hoped that would have come on and given us a bit of a distance by now. Oh, it's flicking. Look, if you look down at the bottom, it does say there. 352 and it's flashing NT. Well, NT is the code for the Newcastle uh, VOR, which is the initial approach fix for the start of our approach. I was just hoping it would give us some uh, an actual distance. I've not put anything in uh, NDB2, so that doesn't go well. Uh, that doesn't work. Alright, so we're now going to start our descent. We want to descend, we're going to pull the, uh, pull the speed back. Pull the speed back to 170, uh, about 170 knots. And s issue a descent of about, well, 1,600, feet per minute. And again, we're doing this manually, remember? There we go. Just keep an eye on that now. Okay, so we're on our way down and we've got a good rate of descent going as well, so that's nice. Yeah, so if anyone wants me to quickly go over that top of descent calculation I made, it's basically work out how much altitude you need to lose by a certain point, so how much altitude you need to lose, then divide that by a thousand, times it by three, that gives you how many miles you need to s away from the waypoint you've selected to start your descent, and then I normally add ten miles to that, just to give me an extra ten miles to uh, slow the aircraft down. And uh, it's a general rule of thumb, but it uh, it works. It works well. It's never let me down. Take the wind into consideration, just in case you've got a strong tailwind or strong headwind. But uh, other than that, other than that, it works absolutely fine. Uh, 
Uh, yes, hey Captain, I need help trying to find the 20 but I won't follow the flight plan, it just wants to bank hard left and descend. Yep, that's the autopilot. Um, which is why I've not turned the autopilot on. For this flight, we're flying manually. Um, you can tell what the autopilot is going to do before you turn the autopilot on. Um, if no one here is completely familiar with um, the flight director, what it actually does. So the flight director, which you turn on just uh, just here, <coughs> basically gives you the green crosses. And the green crosses are showing you where you need to be basically pointing and aiming your aircraft. And as you can see from the way my green cross is set at the moment, the aircraft wants to pull to a hard right, but it, uh, it obviously shouldn't because that would put me into a into a dive so you know what the autopilot is going to do before it actually does it so I've not even turned the uh, autopilot on for this flight all right let's get the uh, passengers all safely seated get them toilets locked So three greens says uh, rewinding the verge. You asked if the default A320 was working in. It's not. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. I'd love to get a distance to the uh, NT NDB. It's not giving it me. Turn that back on again. No. I don't know what the ranges of the NDB. No oh, VOR can be about 150 miles, something like that, depending on the conditions. At Bartholomew, also I was once flying in the sim to Bucharest and the ATC on that airport is totally broken. <laughs> There's no takeoff request option. Uh, do you know what? I don't even use the default ATC just for that general reason. It's not... Uh, it's, it's... it doesn't work, does it? Not if you actually want to fly full proper approaches and things like that. So we're still on our rate of descent of 1600 feet per minute. So that's good. Smile Castle 51, I like the sound and bings mod. <laughs> no one's ever described it as the sound and bings mod. The sound and bings mod is a very cheap piece of software which is well worth getting hold of called self loading cargo. Very simple, very easy to use. Um, yeah, so it's. Uh, it, it, and I think it's only about thirteen pounds, Great British pounds. So that's uh, well worth it. Okay, so we can see that Newcastle is about. Uh, just looking at the navigation display, we can see Newcastle is about thirty miles away. So once we cross over Newcastle, the idea—if anyone's got the approach chart—you'll be able to see. We basically cross over Newcastle. Uh, Airport. We fly a heading of 87 degrees, get to about uh, nine miles out, make a left bank, and then we come back and land, line up on the uh, on the ILS. Not using the autopilot. Uh, Tex Carlos self loading cargo is great, but it is a little buggy. Uh, yes, I agree. I have had before. Uh, you literally take off, and about five minutes later, it says, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our destination, and we're currently actually cruising about 30,000 feet. So it does have a, a couple of moments, but strangely enough, once again, I didn't have any issues with self loading cargo doing that to me until after the latest. Um, latest flight sim update so who knows are the two related uh, Will you and Navigraph what town you over uh, I 
don't use now I only use Navigraph for the charts so I don't have the sim linked to it in any shape size or form okay let's start slowing the aircraft down a little bit more and the procedure that we're flying is restricted to speed of 185 knots so we definitely need to start slowing the aircraft down so get the spoils out And we can also enter the approach mode in a little bit as well. Uh, Captain Raju is the developer version working again, game, Captain. No, no it's not. There is a workaround, uh, which I've not tried, but I have heard good things which about. Uh, which is basically you set up, your, load your flight in cold and dark, immediately hit escape, save your flight, and then immediately reload it again, and apparently that appears to be working and that is something I wish I'd done at the start of this flight because we are manually flying. Ready Meals, how is the autopilot working for you? Um, it's not. We've hand flown the entire flight. Uh, <laughs> that answers your question I hope. Uh, right, so I think the aircraft has just entered uh, approach mode on its own. Oh no, it's not, not quite. I can see the uh, the green dot speed just there. So we're not going to be far off away from that. Just bring in the uh, navigation display a little bit. There we go. Daniel, are we landing late, early or on time? Do you know? I have absolutely no idea. What does it say at the top of the screen? There should be an ETA on there. Um, I think we were meant to land at something like 5 minutes past 10, so... I well, think we're a million miles away from, uh, from that, are we? Okay, 10,000 feet, let's get the landing lights on. Shared cockpit is really going to be fantastic once that's up and running. I think it already is in some respects. Uh, hey, do you know what? That's not that's something I've not tried. If we go to uh, autopilot and select the heading mode, you can see it's shifting around left and right, but the flight director's not moving, so we we're, we're not going to trust that. All right, so probably a few miles out from. Uh, just a few miles out from the NT NDB, which is basically the NDB at Newcastle Airport. We'll enter the approach phase to start slowing the aircraft down to green dot speed. Uh, are you flying in VATSIM or AVO? It's, uh, it's VATSIM, mate, but sadly there's nobody online. Which, given the fact that we've no autopilot, it's probably not a bad thing. Uh, yes, what's the flight number for a message? It's easy, 34 Alpha Mike, which is basically my default flight number if it's not a real world flight. Normally, I just go to the Flight Radar app, see which EasyJet flights are flying, pick one of those and, uh, and fly that, complete with real call signs, but there's not very many EasyJet flights flying at the moment, sadly. Aviation Gates, hey, you're the best. <laughs> You've not seen the landing yet, mate. We're we're, we're, we're flying without a safety net. There is no autopilot. That's going to go in the tech report when we land. There's some paperwork. Autopilot is a little rusty. To which the tech replies, autopilot is not installed on this aircraft. Okay, I'm just going to turn down the weather radar on there. Just because... Uh, we shouldn't need de-icing. It's not, uh, not quite cold enough for that. Alright, so Newcastle Airport is about five, six, seven miles out, or something like that. We're going to enter the approach phase now. In fact, we're already in it. We've passed the approach phase, so that's good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into manage speed mode. And just lift the nose slightly so we can start to do loose speed. And there we go, just see the speed coming down now. Which is good. 
ideally we want to be about 185 knots on this uh, this circle over the airfield okay flaps one And just because actually we're doing a manual landing with an autopilot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the um, I'm going to extend the downwind leg just so we've got a little longer to uh, to line up with the ILS. We turn on the landing system now as we're uh, pretty close to the airport. That has not shown the ILS could be because we're almost right above the airport so don't worry about that too much just yet there is what's called a dead zone above it so you can see the traffic pattern that we're supposed to fly here and as I say I'm just going to extend that uh, downwind leg just so we can get a little bit more time to become a stabilizer on the ILS there we go the ILS has just flicked into view so that's good yeah well that's right at the moment there's only one jet plane in the sky particularly over the UK at the moment sad times isn't it and I think it's the same for a lot of airlines of course it's not just EasyJet So we're on the downwind leg now. Will, was that the A1 in front of us? I've been up there a few times. Richard, don't fly too low. Don't want the house shaking. Hey, with no autopilot, anything could happen. So we're aiming for about 2,000 feet, I think. We can ignore the flight director now. As uh, it's not working. So we'll turn that off. Da -da -da. So just also watch for the glide slope as well. If you want the glide slope coming up, basically, if you're happy, we can start to make that base turn. Company message has just come in. I would love to read that, but I'm just at a critical phase of flight, so. We're practicing sterile cockpit rules, so to speak. Oh, by the way, you're leaving. This is this is going to be the best or worst bit. There's the glide slope coming active. Okay, so we're going to level off at two and a half thousand feet. Uh, the platform altitude for capturing this on the public support is two thousand feet, but I'm extending the downwind leg, just let downwind leg, just because, as I said, I want a little bit more time to get that aligned. So we're now going to go flaps two, and we can start making that uh, that turn to base. Yep, turn onto base leg. And where's my aircraft gone? Oh, there we go. Let's just watch the altitude as we fly. And this is now completely working on instruments because as you can see there's no outside visual references. So I apologise if I'm not checking the chat at the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to land. Please make sure you are seated with your belts fastened and your trays in the upright position. Any items should be safely stored and remember to turn off all electronic devices until after landing. Thank you. So just holding that altitude and again as I said we're using instruments completely. We're in the dark, autopilot's not working and uh, 
yeah, it's going to be a uh, a full manual landing. Oh, there we go. There's some lights. That's nice to see. So with that now at 11 miles, let's switch the ILS rows over. There we go. We've also got a ADF not functioning correctly as well, but that's the least of our issues at the moment. Okay, so the platform wants to use 2,000 feet for the approach. Let's hold that there. Ten miles out, the runway is just off to our left slightly, and there's the ILS localizer moving. So that's good. And you can see the runway coming into view just now. What a lovely sight. So with that at nine miles, let's get the gear down and flaps three. deployed. It's not that bad, Richard, is it? <laughs> and let's get fully configured early. Speed brakes armed. Flaps full. Just check that speed brake lever is at zero. Glide slope is about to be intercepted. Ding the cabin. And we can now start that descent. And at a general speed, what we're we doing? One th about 130. We're looking for a descent rate of about 700 feet per minute to hold the glide slope. At a normal 3 degree glide slope angle. Glad the auto thrust works. If I had to do a full manual flight and control thrust as well, it's like being in a Cessna. All oh, right, we're uh, we're not looking bad, are we? Let's uh, manual flights go. Glad I didn't decide to go down to Heathrow. I think I've gone back to Imides. Gone tech. Newcastle traffic, easy 34 Alpha Mike is established landing at runway 25. Slightly below the glide slope, but nothing too concerning. The main thing as well I see a lot of people sometimes mention in the chat is uh, about the pappies being, you know, they've got to be too red, too white, all the way down, and it's uh, it's not nonsense, but the closer you get to the airport, and the runway, the pappies become, uh, they're, not as, uh, they're not as well aligned. So they're great for sort of this sort of distance is a uh, wonderful visual reference, but when you're approaching the threshold, if you're, if you're three red and uh, one, wi one white, it, it's really not a problem. The main thing is you get in that landing zone. Hundred above. Hundred above the minimums, I don't think we need to worry about that. So we've got a nice stable approach, yeah, it's looking good. You want to use as little aileron as possible when landing and that, not, not, not just general good advice, but it also avoids the wing drop that we, uh, we often see in flight scene 2020. So if you watch the puppies now, the puppies will go completely off the mark in a moment, or they usually do.
Actually, they're not looking too bad. Oh, we've lost a bit of rudder control. What's happening there? Interesting. There we go. So we're down. We had a bit of a bug with the rudder as we landed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Newcastle. The local time is 21.59. Unfortunately, the temperature is currently a very cold zero degrees Celsius. That could actually be quite accurate for the first time ever. Zero degrees. Please remain seated until the aircraft arrives at the gate. Newcastle traffic easy 35 for Mike Baker at runway 25. Yeah, Daniel, I attempted to maintain the centre line and uh, we had a bit of a rudder control issue, as uh, has sometimes been reported. However, let's configure this aircraft for taxi to the gate. Do I need the charts up, guys, or can you just tell me where I'm going? Uh, TARA is off. Radar is off. We'll get the APU started as well. And we can turn the landing lights off. And the strobes off as well. Uh, do, 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 do. Where are we? So where's this? This taxiway Bravo, yeah? <coughs> taxiway Bravo and... We'll look for ooh, either stand ten looks like a decent choice, doesn't it? <coughs> stand ten, yeah, all right, Rich, I'm coming. So we've got a right turn here, and then not immediate left to gate 8, but the left after that. Oh, look guys, I can see you. All the vehicles are there waiting for us. Wonderful. Okay, so there's, uh, there's gate 8. Miguel, this is a developer version from about three weeks ago, however, don't take it as gospel that it definitely works because we've just discovered on this flight that it doesn't. We've had to manual fly the entire journey. Oh, guys, are you sure you waited at gate 10? Look, all them vehicles are all there at gate 9. Oh, well, never mind. I'll flash the taxi lights at you, Daniel. Here we go, here's gate 10. With no taxi line to guide us, so we're making this up. That taxi line looks insanely close to that jetway, so we may just ignore that a little bit. No problem, Miguel, any time, any time. And that's looking, uh, that's looking all right. Oh, we'll dump the aircraft there. Parking brakes are set, and we've got the APU going. The APU is going, so that's good. And we can turn off the, uh, turn off the engines. We'll turn off the taxi lights, so we uh, don't blind uh, Daniel at the gate. Uh, oh, sorry, I set them to take off power. You now won't be able to see for the next five minutes. Ground services, let's see if we can get to uh, the jetway. There we go. Miguel, you're too kind. Thank you very much. Leonard, yeah, you can put your mobile on there. How'd you do the flight without the autopilot, please? Uh, oh, right, Lou, that is practice, I guess. Honestly, it's practice and 
knowing the behavior of the aircraft um, is the best I can give you. Let's just get a power supply there. As you saw, that was a full, uh, full manual flight. And it is possible to do, as long as it's not too long, just because obviously it's, it's, yeah, it's difficult, there's no learn about it, but the fly-by-wire um, makeup of the A320 does make it a point-and-shoot approach. Point the aircraft where you want to go, let go of the side stick, and it will just continue doing that, so that's great. I uh, don't want jet bridge or stairs for L1. Do oh, we definitely want the jet bridge. I think they've just uh, put it up, Daniel. There we go. Uh, right, so they are there. And I'm going to turn off the uh, seatbelt signs. We can tell the passengers. You may now get up. And we can say a big thank you to everyone. So let's just check the message that we got. Daniel, do you want stairs for L2? Uh, yeah, go on, we'll let the cabin crew out the, the, the cold way. <laughs> Panag is your autopilot working with fly-by-wire. Uh, is it not broken? It was broken. This was a manual flight all the way down. Uh, so who we got a message from? We got a, flight, a message from flight 1169 who was flying as well. Hello from Scarebus. That's what we were flying, wasn't it? A Scarebus. Definitely scary when there's just me flying it. So, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's a great little thing that you can send messages between pilots that are flying the fly-by-wire mod. That is uh, wonderful. Uh, Leonard, I will absolutely get the simulator, but I want to know more about the Xbox version. I can't help you there, I'm afraid. Obviously, one, it's not out, and uh, two, I don't think I'd get the Xbox version just because of the other things that you've got to get. Uh, uh, you just can't, I don't think you'll be able to download quite as much, all the mods and things. I may be wrong, it depends on how they set it up. Yes, yes, I got the message. I just, I got it just as I was in the middle of uh, flying the approach, so I didn't, uh, didn't want to rock the boat, take my eye off the ball, and basically crash into the North Sea, so pardon me for not responding quicker. Uh, should we get some baggage service? Come on, Daniel. Where are they? <coughs> We don't know where the baggage is, of course you don't. You press it once, the baggage arrives. You press it again, they actually start doing their job. Uh, can we go to... Yeah, we can go to ground power now, can't we? Which means we can turn the APU off. Stop burning easy jet fuel. Burn Newcastle electricity instead. Uh, Rahib, is anyone else having the issue with the Autopilot A320? Absolutely everybody, my friend. Everybody. Okay, uh, do you know what I might do? I may see if I can do a quick flight check. Uh, I won't be able to do it right now. Uh, but we'll see if we can do a quick video seeing if we can do this exact flight that we've just done, leaving um, Edinburgh, not Edinburgh, leaving Inverness, in the EasyJet livery. So I'm not going to change anything, but what I'll do is I will upload a video at some point of basically doing the flight out of Inverness without saving the aircraft first which is what we've done today I will then go back restart the flight save the flight load the flight and that is meant to uh, meant to fix it isn't it so I think that's going to be a good comparison so I'll get that online as soon as I can and um, basically put that put that fix to the test so uh, yeah, if, um, if that works, that's going to be a lovely workaround until uh, the great guys at Fly By Wire get that sorted. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off for the uh, the evening. And <laughs> sad dad has just made us laugh. Swiss crew are getting the baggage off a, a, a late KLM flight. Oh, fair enough. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll let them off. Alright guys, yep, as I say, I'm going to sign off for the evening and I'll get that, uh, I'm going to put that little, te that little fix 
to uh, to the test and uh, I'll get that uploaded in a video just to see if that works whether it does or not I think a lot of you will be interested to know if that workaround works uh, Mr. Poming that's exactly what I was just talking about there is a workaround which basically is start at the gate cold and dark and then immediately press escape so basically uh, do this so if you hit the gate cold and dark hit the escape key and then save your flights down here save it uh, you can save flights flight plans etc so you save your flight immediately once it's saved go back press load click load the flight that you have just saved and apparently they are saying that that is meant to get rid of the autopilot bug I've not tried it but it's something I'm going to try and I'm going to pop that into a video as well for all you guys to watch as well so please do hit the subscribe button you'll get the notification then when uh, that little test comes out thank you very much to all the subscribers new and old it's been great to fly with you again this evening um, manual flying all a long flight I have not done that for years but that was kind of fun uh, not something I want to make a habit of though so let's get that autopilot fixed thanks very much everybody I will uh, look forward to streaming again for you later and uh, I uh, hope everyone has a good weekend, what's left of it. Thank you very much. Good night.